Well, welcoming the 2023 Ironman World Champion, Sam Laidlow. Congratulations, man. Absolutely incredible to watch that yesterday. Um, I thought for our viewers, it might just be nice to chat through and introduce you to the viewers as well, for those that aren't aware of your background and, and how you've climbed up to take this top step. So, um, yeah, as I say, firstly, congrats on the race. Um, but I'd love to hear a little bit about your introduction to the sport, because you've been doing triathlon, from what I've heard, a very long time. Yeah, I did my first when I was four years old. We, uh, my dad, I wasn't allowed to do it, so my dad had to like follow me, you know. And, uh, and yeah, I won a toy Porsche back then. Um, but uh, no, I, my family moved to France to triathlon training camp business, and um, so I kind of grew up just surrounded by lots of triathletes. And very early on, I kind of knew that, you know, I was hearing about Kona and the World Champs, and that's I knew that that's what I wanted. And um, yeah, so when I was 13, I left to like this uh, kind of sports training center in Foramo uh, and kind of started, I kind of naturally got put in the short course box because that's what kind of you get told when you're a youngster, I guess. And um, then I kind of got to the next level when I was racing French Grand Prix very early, actually. So at 14, I was racing with like Brownleys and Gomez and like, some crazy stuff <laughs> when I think back at like, yeah. 14. Um, and I got a lot of experience there. I was in Poissy, which is like, most dominant French yeah. D1 team. Um, and then, yeah, I just got to a point where I was training the French centre uh, in Montpellier with all the all the, the French team, or lots of the French team. And um, on paper, every, I had everything, you know, to be happy, but I, I just really wasn't. I was I was doing these studies that I didn't really want to do. I was, um, I was training just far too hard and not absorbing any sessions and, uh, I just felt knackered permanently, basically, and I got to. I remember going to these start lines of these D1 races and stuff and European Cups, and just not even wanting to be there. Mm. And so that's when it kind of really clicked, and I decided to to actually leave uh, the, that French space. And before that, it was kind of seen, seen as the prize place, so nobody really left the the, the it's quite the a big move. Okay. And, uh, yeah, so I so left how, it. All. How old were you then? I was 18 then. Okay. Yeah, so I left it all. Left like. Uh, just stopped studying, stopped everything, and I was just looking for the next place to go. And meanwhile, I was staying at uh, my my parents' place, and I was just like, because I left home so early, I was just looking for the next place to go. And uh, I kind of realised over time that actually, like, rather than looking for the right environment, I should I'll just create my own environment, and it may take a while, but at least I can do things how I want. And um, so that's when I asked my dad to coach me because he never actually coached me before then. I'd always have like club coaches or from various different kids clubs, etc. And um, yeah, that was the moment where I, I wrote on a bit of paper. I wanted to be world champ and we kind of worked out how long it would take. And uh, yeah, we said that 2022 would be the first year I go to Kona and that I would go there to do a podium. I wouldn't, I wouldn't like, if I qualified, I wanted <laughs> to be good enough to go. So it was like a big expense, you know, to get to Kona. Um, and that, funny enough, that happened. And then 2023, I would win it and it's crazy because like the whole of this year, like I never, like, I never honestly thought. I think I saw some stats before the race that had like a three percent chance of winning, and I felt I felt that was pretty accurate because like, yeah, on a good day I could win if, yeah. if, all, if the stars aligned. But equally, like I hadn't proved anything, you know, to show that I could. Well, on that note, I know we've got actually some data we can dive into from yesterday's race, um, but I also want to hear a little bit about the actual training that you. Are performing in the lead up to these races obviously with your dad's guidance so what does a typical week and i know this is very hard to say but what does a typical week look like yeah it's uh what worked quite well for us and something that we seem to go back to is doing we seem to do one hard day one longer day and one recovery day uh and just use that three-day cycle and go over again the theory behind it kind of being that the first day you kind of glycogen stores are full you can do some like threshold sets and stuff um, the second day, kind of your, you've used up like your muscle glycogen stores quite a lot on the first day, and so you can kind of promote fat burning on kind of the zone two day, um, and then recover from that. You know, I think recovery is a really important bit if you want adaptation. Uh, people don't don't realise that um, it's not about doing big volume and well. It's about absorbing as much volume as possible. You know, well, but it's. I was going to ask that. Are you a big volume guy? No, I, I mean. I, <laughs> I made some jokes on Instagram like during the winter and stuff and wrote like 
hashtag 40 hour week, hashtag like, <laughs> And it's funny because Jan actually believed them. Like, he was commenting in, uh, on Challenge Roth and he was saying, oh, this guy trains like crazy, he does 40 hour weeks. Yeah, yeah. But no, I don't. I'm well, he the... also did videos way back, I don't know if you remember, also joking about a similar thing. Yeah, yeah. And people believed it. Yeah. But yeah. Um, no, uh, yeah, I, I think what we've done really well with my dad is look at like a long term project, you know, and I think the longer term the project, the, the more chance you've got of actually doing it. Um, it's that famous quote, you know, that people say people always, uh, always overestimate what they can achieve in, in a week or, or two and, and underestimate what they can do in a year or, or two. And uh, yeah, so we set ourselves a long term goal and we've made it. Nice. I'm, I'm intrigued about the dynamic of working with your dad. Obviously, uh, it must be great in some ways, but um, are there any clashes being father son, that sort of close relationship? Uh, if we can get a bit tense, close to races, um, our relationships got better and better over mm. time. The first year was terrible. I was just like, I'm somebody who questions training a lot um, because I also have my own knowledge. And uh, yeah, so the first year I was kind of doubting everything he gave me. And obviously I wasn't seeing necessary results straight away, you know. Um, and in hindsight, that's one thing that I would, uh, if there's one bit of advice I would give to anybody who is up and coming is to, like you can't just do, even if you did six months perfect, you're not, no perfect six months training are gonna make you like win an Ironman, you know? It's like years and years and years and years. And, um, but it's really hard to, before I had that mentality of, oh, I'll just go on a training camp and work my ass off for three weeks and then I should be able to win a race, you know? But it's, no, it's a long-term development and uh, that's what we're still working on, yeah. Now, I hope you don't mind me saying this, but before your second place in the Ironman World Champs last year, you uh, you kind of got a little bit of a name for yourself for absolutely ripping races apart and then well, potentially yeah. falling apart a little bit. And was there something you changed in the lead up to the World Champs that really has clicked for you, or just more latterly, I guess? Uh, or was yeah. it just time, I guess? It's just, it was Yeah, it's time, into strength, place. endurance, yeah. I mean, becoming more efficient, I think that's, yeah. that's a factor. We, like, theoretically, like, my, my power numbers and stuff, they're, they're high, you know, I should, theoretically, what I could hold on, on paper is, is much higher than what I actually do, you know. It's just, am I efficient enough and have I got, can I put enough fuel in, in the tank, you know, to keep it going? Because otherwise, theoretically, on paper, anybody could hold there just underneath their threshold, you know. And if my threshold's 430 watts or something, then, then you should be able to hold 400 watts for an Ironman, you know. Mm. Or theoretically, it's possible. Yeah. But, uh, so it was just kind of trying to extend that, extend that. And then obviously Kona came around and it was a very fast day and a shorter event, you know. So it was, uh, it was much... It was much uh, harder for me to blow up because normally I'd always, for instance, Bolton, I blew up and I had like a 15 minute lead over Joe Skipper at the time when I did Ironman UK and uh, he, the race was like nine hours there, you know, so I blew up at eight and a quarter, but that's like 30 minutes longer already than Kona. Yeah, and now obviously you've got the support of Canyon um, leading into this race. Was there anything specific that you did in the lead up to this race to prep for Nice? Uh, yeah, we, 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 we worked really hard and we had a, a great support network. Um, after Roth, we, we organized a, a secret private camp with Canyon. Yeah. Uh, and it was, uh, it was pretty insane because there was three athletes and about 10 staff of us. Uh, and yeah, we just went around the course every day pretty much. Um, tested out different bikes, what was, far, what was potentially faster or not. Um, and yeah, overall we concluded that their bike would the TT bike would definitely be the fastest. Um, and yeah, we're going around it yesterday, there was definitely, I just kept thinking to myself, oh, if I had a road bike here, I'd be, I'd be stuffed because yeah. there was a lot of really fast sections. Um, because yeah, the thing is on a hilly course, you can argue that on the faster bits, you go, like there's more faster bits, you know, than a, than a flat bit, because obviously the sense you're going really fast. and. Like a TT bike is exponential, like aero is exponential basically. Mm. So if you're going at 60k an hour, then a TT bike is a lot faster than a, than a road bike. Cool, well, that leads me on, and I think this is probably the exciting bit that everyone's sort of waiting to hear about. So the race itself, then, how did it pan out? Just very quickly, the dynamics. Any surprises on the day? Um, no, everything went really smooth. My, my, my main goal was that I knew I had to uh, take a lot of nutrition in. Um, it was a longer race again. And, and a lot of hydration. I, I sweat, I sweat massively, and so I have to be, keep, really keep on top of the amount of fluid I take, which is challenging, especially here, as there was less um, less aid stations than, than Kona. Um, so yeah, I mean, I took, I waited. Everybody sat out a bit hard on the swim. I waited, and then when it slowed, I, I picked the pace. Um, I'm not not too happy. I, I wish I could be a little bit stronger to make that group a little bit more kind of, uh, I'd say, it, elitist or whatever. Um, 
know, they stretch it out a little yeah, bit. Yeah, just have a few less people with me. Yeah. But the main two people that I didn't want with me were Magnus and Patrick, uh, because they're one's a weapon on the bike and one's a weapon running, mm. and um, and that paid off. They both went there. Um, yeah, so that was that was definitely a wise move. Um, and then the bike, uh, I set off at kind of the top end of what I thought I could hold. Uh, my goal was obviously to ride fast, uh, and to do that is you have to take risks and ride. When it's slow, you have to put a lot of power down, and when it's easy, you have to pretty much feel wheel, you know. And I think that's quite, it's like one thing I did quite well is that I've got like probably 35 watts between my average and my normalized, you know. So I was really recovering on the, as soon as we were going fast, and then trying to like ride at 400 watts basically when we were going and, up on. And had you pre planned with Clermont that? You were going to attack, or it just worked no, no, out that it way? No, no, it just happened That's naturally. Cool. I was I was riding in the front, going up that first climb at 4:30, 4:50, and then he just comes shooting past me, and I'm like, "Well, he's on a good day," and uh, <laughs> and, I, and I kind of thought it would be a risk, and but it could be worth it, and uh, yeah, I knew that he really knew the course well, so um, I think, and it showed. You know, we took two minutes away on a, on a section where there's no really uh, there's no really reason for us to take time apart from knowing the corners really well and stuff, and that definitely helped. Yeah. Cool. Well, I know you've got some numbers as well from uh, from the race. This is a, a word of warning, totally unrelatable to many people out there because they are ridiculous numbers for an Ironman. So, um, what was your normalised power for? Like? My normalised power was three 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 watts. And then your, I believe your twenty minute was your peak twenty minute. Peak twenty minute, uh, three eight six. Thirty minute, three seven five. Sixty minute, three five two. Ninety minute, three four six. Yeah, and you're I happy with how, how you executed the bike, obviously. I mean, yeah, I had really good legs on the day. Um, that was the one thing I kind of you can't really plan. You have days where you have great legs and days where you don't so much, and they just kept giving you. Um, and also, like everything was holding up well, like my stomach, and because when you're going hard, you know, like it's. And I think that was, for instance, that what, what was Clement's mistake is that I'm pretty sure he swam much better than he normally does. He doesn't normally come out front pack, and then took this. The start of the bike really hard as well, so and then he basically from there on couldn't take any any nutrition. So, but I knew I knew I was on a good day because my heart rate was nice and low, and yeah, I could just really ride it. I was in control, you know, in his wheel, and I knew when I got to the top of the climb, I would be more in my element because he's a lighter guy than me, and yeah, so yeah, it just worked out perfectly. And you seem like you were really consistent on the run as well. Yeah, the last lap I faded a little bit, but equally I kind of wanted to I wanted to play it a bit safe because. Mm. I knew that if I kept running, it was it was one, you know, um, and I didn't want to push and try and keep the same average speed as I had on the first three laps, because and then risk, for instance, like cramping or, or so. Yeah, I just, really just wanted to make it around, but that last that last straight was yeah, I felt like I was on the treadmill. I wasn't getting anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, very good. Uh, what's up next then? What's up next? Um, I'm just, holiday time. I'm, I'm looking, looking to his partner. <laughs> <laughs> um, What's next? No, I think definitely, well, first of all, I've got the Bear Man, which is my, my family's, uh, I think you've actually mentioned it in your show. I once. have, yeah, and I had no idea until messaging your dad prior to this yeah, that yeah. he actually helps organise it. No, no, we, yeah, we don't help organise it. You run, run it, it, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, uh, just uh, pretty much just my, my folks, yeah. yeah so, um, and you've obviously done it before yourself and why? That was my yeah. first yeah. iron distance, yeah, but um, <laughs> yeah, so we'll be helping out on that, that'd be pretty cool. Uh, again, so many days of not sleeping, but um, yeah, and then hopefully, a little bit of time off and yeah, just try and soak it all in. I think I definitely want to take as much time as I need, you know, and, and build back and, and be be present in Kona, you know. That's, awesome. that's the goal. Well, thanks, Sam, for today. Thank yeah, you, mate. Really, really impressive. And thanks, you guys, for tuning in. Really insightful. Cheers, guys.